a model steamboat named Edith, and this is part four. The first steam test of the boiler and steam engine on the bench. The boiler successfully passed the hydraulic test, but before I can steam test it, I need to fit a pressure gauge. It would be very foolish to run a boiler like this without knowing how much pressure was inside it. So the first job is to fit the pressure gauge. I'm going to fit the pressure gauge using a siphon. A siphon is a short piece of copper pipe and it goes from the boiler to the pressure gauge. And the idea of this is that water condenses in the siphon and therefore steam does not get as far as the pressure gauge because the pressure gauge is not suitable to withstand the temperature of live steam. So the condensed water in the siphon is a permanent barrier against the steam reaching the pressure gauge. And I would just like to say that the siphon does not need to be upright. Gravity plays no part in this. On the Stuart Models HB6 boiler, the pressure gauge was fitted via a siphon and the siphon was on its side. And quite a few viewers told me that this was wrong. All the experts were out in force, but no, they were wrong. The siphon can be in any position that you like it to be because the water condenses in the siphon and stops the steam from touching the pressure gauge. And briefly, while on the subject of viewers' comments, I received a comment from a viewer who said clearly that he used nitrogen to test his boilers, on the grounds that it was a thinner gas. Well, I find that a bit weird, really, because as far as I'm aware, and I'm no scientist, that isn't most of the atmosphere nitrogen. So I don't know where this viewer got his nitrogen aspect from, but no, don't use nitrogen to test your boiler. You need to use water. That is why it is called a hydraulic test. You could use oil but that would make a mess of the inside of the boiler. So, good old water, cheap and cheerful water is the way to go. And another viewer said, Well, surely, when the water comes out, won't it cut you like a water jet cutting system? Uh, no, because it's just a quick squirt of water and all the pressure's gone. So, just to recap, do not use nitrogen or any compressible gas for testing a boiler, and use water, because it's not going to chop your arm off with the squirt of water that comes out as you release the pressure. And another viewer said that maybe I should fit a tap to release the pressure. Well, it's hardly worth it because I don't test boilers every day and a little squirt of water, even if it went onto my shirt, is not the end of the world. And while I've been rambling on about viewers' comments, which generally make me smile most of the time, what I've just done is filled the boiler with water for the steam test. Please note, I did not use nitroglycerine. I did not use sulfuric acid, nitric acid, hydrochloric acid, or anything else dangerous, it's plain old water from my tap in the kitchen. So now with half a glass of water showing, I've lit the burner. This is the burner from my Stuart 3500 series boiler, and it's perfect for firing this one. The 3500 series is a 3.5 inch diameter boiler, and this one is a 4 inch diameter boiler. This boiler has a very unusual internal water tube structure. Instead of cross tubes, which is normal, this boiler has quite a lot of loop piping inside the centre flue. And when I first lit the burner, the pipe started making a funny noise from inside the flue. So I've moved the burner out a little way and turned it down. I think that the sudden appearance of a lot of heat in the centre flue caused the water to boil in the tubes too quickly. And that's what made the noise. It was like a bad plumbing sound, a bit of a clunky type of sound. By reducing the heat, it stopped the noise. This is most unusual though, and it's possibly only to do with this special tube arrangement because on normal centreflue type boilers with just cross tubes in there, this doesn't happen. Initially, I left the tap open, just as an indicator as to when the steam was starting, and now it's starting with a vengeance, so I'm shutting the tap and I will now allow the pressure to build. And in no time at all, the needle starts to lift on the gauge. There is a steam leak from the threads on the clack valve as they go into the boiler. I'll fix that once the boiler's had time to cool before the next steam test. The main thing is I can steam test this boiler with confidence because I know that the boiler will easily withstand up to 160 pounds per square inch. And now it's just approaching 80 psi. So I'm turning off the gas burner and I'm going to allow the pressure to drop and the boiler to cool. And once it's cooled, I can fit the engine. The boiler steams very well indeed, I really am very happy with this boiler. I was going to replace it, but no, definitely not, this is an exceptionally good boiler, as indeed is this very rough looking engine. I cannot believe that something that looks so horrible runs so beautifully, but that's the way it is. Some engineers are only interested in the mechanical aspect of it, 
not the external appearance. In this next part of the test, I'm obviously steam testing the boiler once again and the engine, but I'm also testing the water pump system. And look at this, what an innovation this is. This is the hand pump. It's a very long ram and it's a very good seal in the bore, and when you're not using it, it has a bayonet fitting to lock it in place, and then the water pump driven by the engine's crankshaft takes over. This is quite an innovation, and I've never seen this before on a model engine. Having said that though, it's okay if the model engine is down in the bowels of the boat. It wouldn't look too good though if the engine was sat in an open launch, because it's a little bit overscale. In this clip you can see the entire layout. I've temporarily piped the pump up to a water supply, and as a temporary measure I'm just using some silicone rubber tubing for this. And also using some black silicone rubber, I've piped the steam outlet from the tap to the steam inlet on the engine. I've thoroughly lubricated the engine, refilled the displacement lubricator, and I'm just waiting for some pressure. I have about 20 psi on the clock, which should be more than enough to make this engine run. And as I open the steam valve, The engine runs. I thought I'd stop talking so you could hear the engine running. It runs beautifully, does this engine, on steam just as well as it did on air. The pumping of water is faultless. There's no air getting into the system. Every time the piston ram moves towards the end of the cylinder, it ejects water like this. Currently the water has been taken from the plastic container and pumped back to the container. This is just to verify that the pumping action works, and it works very well. If I was to hard pipe this to the boiler, it would pump water into the boiler. And I will be doing this probably before I put it back in the boat, just to test how it works. When I fit the bypass valve, the position of the bypass valve controls how much water goes into the boiler at each stroke, and how much water returns to the tank. And by setting the position of the bypass valve correctly, you can almost get constant running until the gas runs out. The principle being that you set the bypass valve so that the engine is just pumping enough water into the boiler to make up for the water that the engine itself is using. This system is one of the best that I've seen for quite a long time. I've turned the gas down to next to nothing, as you can see there's almost a yellow flame appearing. The engine is running, although it's not pumping water into the boiler, it's still running, and the pressure is approaching 80 pounds per square inch. You can't really want much better than this. I have had situations where the blow lamps always had to be on full and the engine's just been running at this speed and the boiler pressure's been dropping all the time. Well, that's about it. I've turned off the gas burner and now I'm just going to run off the residual steam that's in the boiler and see how long that takes. This engine, by the way, is currently running on 100% wet steam. That's steam straight from the boiler, which is known as wet steam. I will be putting a steam dryer in the circuit, where the pipe to the engine goes back down through the chimney and reheats the steam before it gets to the engine. This is what I call a very successful steam test. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.